what is proof by deduction? Well, defining it, it's the process of proving a statement is true through mathematical reasoning. It's not to be confused with proof by induction, proof by exhaustion, or proof by contradiction, but don't worry, we will cover those in a different video. So what does it look like in terms of answering a question? Well, what you need to do is take the information you're given in the question and use this to form a series of logical steps until you reach the conclusion. These logical steps need to be based on well-known mathematical principles and they need to follow on from one another to form a logical argument. So let's take a look at a first example. We'll start with a fairly easy one. Prove that the product of an even and an odd number is always even. Let's start by underlining what the question is giving us. It's telling us to take the product of an even and an odd number. And what we're trying to prove is that it's always even. So this is the conclusion, the thing we're trying to prove. To make a start on this question then, we're going to need to be able to express an even and an odd number algebraically. Let's take a look at the even numbers, so we all know those. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. These are all just multiples of 2, right? They're just the 2 times tables. So let's think about how we can write this down. So suppose I take an integer n, so an integer just means a whole number. Okay, well at the moment this can be any whole number, so this could be 3, 29, 300, 4, it can be anything. So how do I ensure that this is an even number? Well, we said that an even number is a multiple of 2, so all I'm going to do is just times it by 2, 2n, and now that ensures it's an even number. How about the odd numbers then? How are we going to represent those? Well, if you think about it, the odd numbers just kind of slot in between the even numbers. So if we take an even number, well, if we add 1, we're going to get an odd number, and that's going to be the same for all of them. If you take any even number and add 1 to it, you're going to get an odd number. So let's take an even number, so I'm going to write 2m, that's an even number, and let's just add 1. Notice that I've used different letters. So here I've used n and here I have used m. So the reason is, if I used n to express my odd number as well, then it would imply the two numbers are consecutive. So consecutive just means that if they're put in order, they would lie next to each other. So if, if we think about that, if we take the number 2n, then to find the number next door, it would be 2n plus 1 because we're dealing with whole numbers here, so the consecutive number would be 2n plus 1. Let's just try this with a value of n, so let's take n equals 1. Well then 2n is going to give us 2, and 2n plus 1 is going to give us 3. So as you can see, these numbers are next door to each other, they are consecutive. And this is not what we want. The question's not asking us about consecutive numbers, it's just saying the product of an even and an odd number. So this is actually a little bit too specific if we were to use 2n plus 1 and 2n. We just want it to be any even and odd number, okay? So that's why I've chosen m, which is a different integer, which just makes sure that these two numbers aren't necessarily consecutive. Okay, so we've now expressed an even and an odd number algebraically. The question actually asks us to find the product, so let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be 2n times 2m plus 1, and I need to use brackets here because I'm timesing the whole even number by the whole odd number. Expanding this, this is going to be 2n times 2m, which is going to give us 4nm. And 2n times 1, that's just going to give us 2n. We're trying to prove that it's always even. Remember we said earlier that if a number is even, it will be a multiple of 2. So this means we should be able to take a factor of 2 out. So let's see if we can do that here. And yeah, we absolutely can. We can take a factor of 2 out. So that's going to give us 2 with 2nm plus n inside the brackets. So since n is an integer and m is also an integer, so the product of them, n times m, is also going to be an integer. Okay, so this part here, that's going to be an integer, and if we add a whole number, an integer, to another integer, well, that's also going to be an integer. Okay, so this whole thing here is a whole number, and let's just let that equal k. Okay, and we've just discussed that k is going to be a whole number. Overall, we can write this as 2 times k. Just replacing the brackets with k there, as that's what we've set it equal to. Okay, so now we are done. We've shown that it's of the same form as this 2n up here. So it must be an even number. So remember up here, n was just an integer. So it can be any integer. Um, and here, k is an integer. So it's of the same form and we are done. We have shown that the product of an even and an odd number is always even. Let's look at another example. 
prove that the sum of three consecutive odd numbers is a multiple of three. As we did in the last question, let's first underline what the question is giving us or what it's telling us to do. So it's telling us to take the sum of three consecutive odd numbers. And what we're trying to prove is that it's a multiple of three. Again, just as we did with the last question, we need to try and express what the question's asking us to do. So we need to express three consecutive odd numbers algebraically. That's the first challenge. So from before, we already know how to express an odd number. That's going to be 2n plus 1. We actually need to find out how to express three consecutive odd numbers. So let's take the number 2n plus 1. How would we find what the next odd number would be? Well, let's look at a numerical example. So I'm just going to write out 1 through till 5. OK, so we've got our 2n plus 1 and we're trying to figure out how we can find the next odd number. So let's just suppose we've got 1, which is an odd number. So if we add 1 to it, well, we're going to arrive at an even number, which is not what we want because we want consecutive odd numbers. But if we add 2, we're going to arrive at the next odd number. So let's just do the same to the expression. Let's add 2 to this. So if we add 2, we're going to get 2n plus 3. OK, so now looking at the 3, if we add 1, we're going to arrive at another even number, which is, again, not what we want. But if we add 2, we're going to arrive at the next odd number. So again, let's do the same to the expression. We'll add 2, and that's going to give us 2n plus 5. So by doing this, we figured out how to algebraically express three consecutive odd numbers. So the question is actually asking us to find the sum of these three consecutive odd numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. So sum means to add, so let's add them all together. So that's going to be 2n plus 1, add 2n plus 3, add 2n plus 5. So collecting all the n terms, that's going to be 2n plus 2n plus 2n, which is going to give us 6n. And collecting all the numbers, that's going to be 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 9. So at this stage, we can kind of look back at the question to see where we're trying to head, what we're trying to prove. So we're trying to prove that it's a multiple of 3. We know that if any number is a multiple of 3, we should be able to take a factor of 3 out of the number. So let's see if we can do that in this case. And yeah, we absolutely can. We can take a factor of 3 out. So if we take 3 out, we're going to be left with 2n plus 3 inside the brackets. OK, so because n is an integer, if we times an integer by 2, we're going to be left with an integer, so a whole number. And if we add this whole number, if we add 3 to it, then again, that's also going to be a whole number. So this whole thing here in the brackets is a whole number. So let's just let the insides of the brackets equal k, which we've just said will be a whole number. So overall, we can write this as equal to 3k, just substituting that bracket there for k. OK, and we're done, because we've shown we can write the sum of three consecutive odd numbers as 3 times k, where k is an integer. Moving on, let's look at another example. This one will be a little bit trickier than the previous two. Prove that the height h in the diagram is given by h equals ab over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this question, we're given the diagram and we're trying to prove this. We're trying to work out what h is. OK, so this is a little bit more tricky. Let's see what we can get from the diagram. We've got a couple of right angles there. It's a right angled triangle. So let's just write down a few things that we know how to do with right angled triangles. So with right angled triangles, we know we can use Pythagoras, we can use trigonometry, we can also work out the area of the triangle, and we can also work out the area of a triangle if it's not right angled as well. So those are a couple things. So it's always a good idea just to write out what you know about what you're given and see if you can make any progress from there if you are unsure what to do. It's always a good idea to look at what you're trying to prove as well. So we're trying to prove this up here. And as you can see, the bottom term in this fraction looks a little bit like we're going to be needing to use Pythagoras. So let's have a go and see how we might be able to use Pythagoras here. And what we're trying to prove, it's involving an a squared and a b squared term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this triangle round so that we've got it in the same form as this diagram here with the right angle in the bottom left corner. OK, so we flipped this 
all the way around so that's in the bottom corner. So that's going to mean that this length here is going to be A, this bottom is going to be B, and this one here is going to be the H. Okay, so just using Pythagoras, let's just let this side here equal X, then we can work out what X is. So X squared is going to be A squared plus B squared. And so therefore X must be the square root of A squared plus B squared, which is good. That's promising. It looks like the bottom line of that fraction that we're trying to prove. Okay, so we've used Pythagoras. So the next thing to look at would be trig. It's unlikely we're going to be using trig though, because we're not given any angles. So maybe let's skip over that one for now, but we can come back to it if we find that we haven't made any progress by looking at the area. But let's take a look at working out the area. For a right angled triangle, it's half of base times height. So let's look at this picture here. Um, then the area is going to be one half times the base, which is B in this case. That's going to match with the base here. And the height is actually going to be A here. Okay, matching this diagram at the top. Okay, so half times B times A, which we can just write as one half AB. I'm just going to swap the A's and B's around. So in actual fact, we can also work out the area another way. If we've got this length here, which is actually what we called X, this bottom length, then the area is actually just going to be equal to one half times X times H. Just half times the base, which is going to be X in this diagram, times the vertical height, and the vertical height here is going to be H. So there are two ways there we can work out the area of the triangle. So I'm going to simplify this. This is going to become one half xh. Okay, so we've got two formulas for the area of the triangle, but it's the same triangle, so that means they must be equal. So let's just set them equal to each other. So that's going to be 1 half xh is equal to 1 half ab. Again, it's always a good idea to have a look back at what we're trying to prove. So we're trying to prove that H is equal to AB over the square root of A squared plus B squared. There's no X in the formula that we're trying to prove. Well, that's actually all right, because we've worked out what X was earlier. We've got an equation for X in terms of A and B. So let's actually substitute in that value of X there. So that's going to give one half times the square root of A squared plus B squared times H is going to be equal to one half AB. Okay, so now we've got an equation relating H and A and B. So let's just rearrange it to find H. First of all, we can cancel out the halves. So that's going to give us the square root of A squared plus B squared times H is equal to AB. And then finally, dividing by A squared plus B squared is going to give us our required result. So H is equal to AB over the square root of A squared plus B squared. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be uploading more maths tutorials very regularly.